Greetings, Mark Nation. It's Randy Asari and Tim McLaughlin. Back with another episode of Inside the Huddle, coming to you from the WODU studio in the Web Center. Let's get into our weekly ODU and national sports updates for you. First, we'll begin with our ODU update. For football, our ODU football monarchs are back in action this Saturday after a well-earned bye week in which Coach Wilder gave the guys four days off in Conference USA action against the Owls of Florida Atlantic University. We have a couple of players returning from injury, and the week off will certainly help our football monarchs complete on the gridiron. Kickoff is at the SB Ballard Stadium at 6 p.m. It will be freshman quarterback Stephen Williams' first home game start at quarterback. The FAU, the FAU Owls come in with the record of two wins and three losses. Last week, the Owls beat Middle Tennessee at home 38-20. to We are somewhat surprised that the Owls came into the game as a three-and-a-half-point favorite over the Monarchs. It's time to get it done on the field. Come out to the game. The, cor- the forecast is for a beautiful evening. Next on our uh, f- lineup of sp- fall sports is men's soccer. So the Old Dominion men's soccer team has a record of six wins, one loss, and two ties. They are three wins, no losses, and no ties in the conference. And they dominated number 13, Kentucky, um, 2 nothing last Saturday night at the ODU Soccer Complex in front of over 1,000 fans. The Monarchs now lead the league and remain undefeated in conference play. The victory marked um, Old Dominion's first ever win against Kentucky. In just 22 seconds, Brandon Purdue sent Nico Klosterhofen a pass that went that was then sent past Kentucky goalkeeper Enrique Facuse to give the Monarchs a one to nothing advantage going into the second half. The two teams exchanged shots, which Kentucky led the Monarchs seven to, seven to six. In the first half, ODU goalkeeper Murkan Akar had five saves, while Facuse had just one. In the second half, scoring began in the 50th minute. Crosswoods fed Purdue, a ball that left him with no Wildcat defenders. Purdue shot a bullet right past Kentucky goalkeeper to the left corner of the net, which re- propelled the Monarchs 2-0. No- two to Leading the Monarchs this season, freshman Fr- Brandon Purdue has six goals. Behind Purdue, Max Wilshere, is in close behind with four. Max Wilshere also led the Monarchs with four shots during that game, while Andrew McKelve and Mikkel Peterson split shots for the Wildcats with three each. Coming off of this upset win, the Monarchs are now receiving votes in the coaches' poll, which is the top 25 national ranking. Tonight, our men's soccer team will take on the UNC Charlotte 49ers in Charlotte, North Carolina, in another Conference USA matchup. Fellow Monarchs, our men's and women's soccer teams are both uh, very competitive and are strong teams in the conference. Please come to, uh, come to some games and support the teams, and especially make note that the men's um, soccer team is hosting the Conference USA um, tournament later. Um, this season. So you got to come out and support them as they should be the favorites. Next on to the women's soccer. The, our women's soccer team are coming off a great Conference USA road trip deep into the heartland of Texas where they defeated both UTEP and UTSA. Our women's soccer team current record stands at six wins, three losses, and two ties overall and three wins, one loss, and zero ties in Conference USA. Uh, what a great start to the season. They're back in, um, in action at the ODU Soccer Complex on Sunday, October the 8th, when the Monarchs host Florida International University at 3 p.m. <clears throat> Next is field, field hockey. The Old, Old Dominion field hockey team host Big East Foe Temple on Friday at 4 at the LR Hill Sports Complex. Old Dominion, 4 and 7 overall and 1 and 2 in the Big East, will look to snap its three-game losing skid after suffering defeats at Liberty and number 5 North Carolina last weekend. The Monarchs have been impressive at home this season with a 4 and 1 record 
at LR Hill. The only loss was a 3 to 2 defeat to the number 7 Penn State in the se- in the season opener in which they should have won um, leading 2 to, two to nothing. The Monarchs are averaging 2.18 goals per game and are led by the um, sophomore forward duo of Aaron Huffman, 7 goals, 1 assist and Alexa Ostwich, 5 goals, 2 assists, who have combined for half of ODU's goals this season. Seniors Daniel Grega four goals, three assists, and Julia Van Dorsten, two goals, three assists, have also been valuable to the ODU attack this season. Defensively, redshirt freshman Lacey Frazier made her first career game against number 5 UNC, making six saves and holding the Tar Heel attack to just three goals on 20 shots. Junior um, Kelsey Robles had um, started the previous 10 games and leads the team with 58 saves. Many true freshmen have also made key contributions for ODU in 2017. Cameron Neri Strickland, four assists, leads the squad in assist, while Mia Fucci, one goal, one assist. Anwick Vandersteen, um, one assist, and Alexis Gingrich have all started multiple games. ODU leads the all time series against Temple, 20 wins, four losses, and one tie. However, the Owls won at the last meeting defeating the Monarchs 2-1 to in overtime in Philadelphia last season. Uh, now for men's basketball, the following was taken from the Virginia Pilot. Uh, the basketball season is very quickly for the, um, it's starting very quickly for the Old Dominion men in 2016 and 2017. Instead of playing deep into March as they did the previous two seasons when they reached the NIT semifinals and won the Vegas 16, the Monarchs lost in the quarterfinal round of the Conference USA Tourney. The Monarchs finished their season at 19 wins, 12 losses. It made for a longer offseason than usual, one filled with comings and goings, two players graduated and two transferred, five others arrived. Practice began a week ago with sm- with a smaller but more skilled and versatile players and is looking to revamp its style to suit the talent on hand. It's potentially the most radical makeover since Jeff Jones became coach four years ago. Now, women's basketball for the Lady Monarchs. Our Lady Monarchs have open practice under new head coach Nikki McCray Penson. There's a lot of new faces on the coaching staff and roster, and they hope to have a great season. And now on to the national level and what is happening in professional sports. For Major League Baseball, the playoffs have started recently with the Yankees beating the Twins 8-4 to in the AL wildcard on Tuesday night and the Diamondbacks beat the Rockies 11-8 to in the NL wildcard on Wednesday night. The, ma- the matchups are now in the American League Division Series, the Red Sox against the Astros. The Astros won Game 1 yesterday, 8-2, to with Jose Altuve leading the way with three solo home runs for the Astros, and the Yankees against the Indians. The Indians won Game One yesterday, um, four to zero, with the pitchers combining for a shutout. Also, can't forget that Aaron Judge was 0 for four with a strikeout. And for the National League Division Series, the defending World Series champions Chicago Cubs open up against the Nationals tonight in what should be a, a good series. While also in the NL, the Arizona Diamondbacks meet the and Los Angeles Dodgers for the first time in the play- in the playoffs in a division rivalry matchup. Also, let's note that the Diamondbacks won the season series against the Dodgers 11-8. One could, one could easily pencil in the Indians and Dodgers in the World Series based on their um, regular season, but let's not get too ahead of ourselves here. It's anybody's game. Tune in, folks. should be um, fun October. Now for the NFL... The Cowboys are heading into week five, two and two, with the loss against the Rams last week. Now, for Tim, are you surprised by the record so far by the Cowboys? I am. I think that um, they should be doing better just because of how great Doc Prescott and Ezekiel Elliott did last year. But um, I feel like they're just one of those teams who are just like injury prone and are just prone to like breaking down and stuff. So they might recover, they might not. Who knows? Uh, I agree with you there. I, I feel like with Dak Prescott and Zeke, like they were rookies last year. So now with them 
like coming the second year off their belt, being the sophomore in, in the NFL, a lot of defenses now are going to see the way they play. They see that now they see the whole game tape, they see the, the film, and see what their strengths and weaknesses are. So, and for that reason, I don't I don't know if they're um, I was, I'm not that surprised. I was watching your first take this morning on on ESPN, yeah. and um, the question was basically. Are the Cowboys uh, one hit wonder? One hit wonder, yeah. And um, they basically went back and forth, but the answer that they had was that they're a no hit wonder. They're no, they're not. Yeah, not? they're not. They just don't think that they're going to be that great this year. Yeah, and yeah. and um, Stephen A. was saying that the accident wouldn't happen, that, happen, right? What they said that their accident wouldn't happen. And yes, and and with, with the loss, um, with the loss, of the Packers in the playoffs right. that doesn't count as a one hit. Um, so yeah, yeah I, I can so. get you there. But at the same time, I feel like as well as like their offense, it's they still got a good offensive line and all that. But also with Des Bryant, I feel like Des Bryant this year he hasn't really shown that he's a top ten receiver in the league. He seemed like he's regressed like. After like 2015, when he had like a career year, yeah, he does like, have to step it up. I yeah. mean, he's pretty old, but yeah, but it seemed like I mean he's old. But look at Jason Witten. Jason Witten is like plus 35 years old, and um, he's like uh, he's still doing numbers and still doing good for for the team. So uh, that's why I can see them uh, not doing that well so far. So we'll see how it go. Um, uh, you got anything else to add with with the Cowboys? I don't. You don't? Okay. Cool. I mean, they have a rematch of the Packers this weekend, but yeah, I think the Packers are going to win. You think the Packers are going to win? Yeah, yeah, I feel the same way. Especially, they're playing at Jerry World, too, right? At uh, In Green Bay? Yeah, no, I think they're playing, they're playing in Green Bay? Or, I'm oh, not sure. Yeah, I, I think, think they're so. playing in Dallas. Are you yeah. playing in Dallas? Okay. Yeah, I mean, either way, the Packers are it's a good, better what, team. What playing, so. right? Yeah, I see that. Um, now, the Chiefs, and also uh, NFL News, the Chiefs are the only remaining team in the league with a win against the Redskins this past season. Uh, this past Monday night. For me, being a Redskins fan, I'm a little bit upset about it, but, hey, it is what it is. But, uh, Tim, do you think the Chiefs are for real, or do you see them not going far in the playoffs? Well, the Chiefs are a very good team, but they have to establish their roster and um, get ready if injuries happen. And um, they're having a great year so far, but um, I don't know. I mean, they are the best team in the NFL at this point in time. But um, it's hard to have like a undefeated season or like go all the way and right. so on and so forth. So I mean, they'll have to kick it up a notch if they want to achieve their goals. Yeah, I agree with you there. But um, the Chiefs as well. I, I, I feel like they are for real team. Like the way Alex Smith has been playing throughout this year, he has like eight touchdowns with no picks and like four games in the season. That's and especially numbers. you have to put in the fact that. The Patriots are your, usually the top team in the right. AFC, and they've had like one of the worst defenses in the whole league. The whole league. And they barely beat the, the uh, um, Buccaneers, Buccaneers last, night, last yeah. night. So yeah, if it wasn't for those couple missed field goals that Nick Folk missed, they, uh, Tim Bay probably would have won that and, game. And so. um, the Patriots were fortunate that um, they came up with that uh, that last minute stand, and yeah. that, uh, James Winston threw that incomplete pass in the game. Yeah, so. But, but I, I do see the Chiefs as a for real team as well. Like, like I said, Kim, Kareem Hunt, you know, he's been playing really well since Spencer Ware got injured during the preseason. And um, like I said, Kareem Hunt, he's probably most likely going to be NFL uh, Rookie of the Year on the offensive side. Um, their defense is playing outstanding with uh, Justin Houston. And um, I don't, and I don't think they got Tama Hali yet. He's I think he's still hurt. Traditionally, and I Marcus think that is doing well as well. Uh, their defense is more known than their offense, the more, uh, but yeah. they might be more balanced this year. Yeah, because, I mean, that was like Alex Smith's whole game was pretty much him being a game manager. He was like throwing dink and dunk throws every time. He wasn't really like throwing it down the field, but it seemed like since, uh, I think since Patrick Mahomes uh, been playing, I mean, since he got drafted, I think Alex Smith has been playing really well. He's been showing that he got that fire in him to keep um, striving, to keep um, doing well, and he's playing like an MVP caliber player. So, uh, also, you we talked earlier, and you think that um, like they uh, they played the Texans th uh, this week, this Sunday against uh, Deshaun Watson, and the Texans. Uh, you and you think that the Texans going to win that game? I do not. You don't think so? I oh, do okay. not. Deshaun Watson has played amazing so far. Right. Um, maybe one of the rookie of the year candidates, but. Mm -hmm. I think that the Chiefs are going to win that game. The Chiefs going to win that game. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I feel also, I feel that way too. I mean, Deshaun Watson has been playing like really, really well. He he almost won against the uh, Tom Brady like two weeks ago. 
yeah, two weeks ago, and, they, and he almost won that game. Uh, the Texans probably caught maybe those interceptions uh, late. Then we'll, it'll probably be a different story for the uh, the Patriots. So, yeah, um, yeah, I don't really think the, uh, the Chiefs are going to win that game. And uh, also, uh, for Derek Carr, speaking of the, uh, with the Raiders, uh, he's going to be out for two to six weeks with a back injury. Now, Tim, uh, with Carr out, do you think the Raiders will win? I mean, will miss him? I think that the Raiders will miss him a lot. Right. Because Derek Carr is – is their man, and he's one of the best young quarterbacks in the league. And um, I hope that E.J. Manuel plays well, but I don't um, think that he will be able to play to Derek Carr's um, caliber. But um, I don't know who their opponents are when he will be out, but maybe they'll be able to win a couple of games right. and and so on. Uh, what, what do you think? Well, uh, yeah, I think they're going to miss him a lot as well. I mean, he is their, like, backbone to the um – to the offense, I think they got a great offensive line, but I think they just need to develop yeah. a running game to help the the new yeah and a lot of new people, temporary quarterback. Yeah, a lot of people think since you know Marshall Lynch came out of retirement, he's gonna be that same Marshall Lynch that he played. But like, that's not necessarily true. But it's not. Yeah, it's not true at all. He hasn't really been playing so far. They might he's have to do well. a running back by committee. Running back committee. Yeah, most most definitely might have to do that. They haven't really been playing well. Amari Cooper been dropping catches left and right. Uh, Crabtree, I think he's been injured this past two weeks. And, um, yeah, I don't really see them. Um, I think they're going to miss him a lot. I think E.J. Manuel, when he was in college, he was a good player. He's from this uh, area. But, you know, he almost could have won that game against uh, Denver, I think, when they played last week. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I don't know what they're going to do. We'll see how it go. Yeah. So, um, now other news uh, with Cam Newton. He recently apologized for his uh, comments when a female reporter asked him about routes. Uh, he laughed at the question saying, you know, oh, it's kind of funny hearing a female talk about routes and things like that. So, Tim, what do you make of that? I uh, I just don't understand what, what he means by um, saying it's funny hearing a female ask about routes. Like, um, I don't I don't really know like ask about routes and stuff. I mean, I get that he was kind of like thrown off by the question, right. but I don't think that he should have said. Uh, I feel like he should have kept it in a football perspective. Yeah. But I do um, I do have to give him respect and props for. Um, sending out like a sincere apology to the reporter and um, every everybody out there. Yeah, I, I agree with you there. Um, I feel like well, um, Cam Newton. He, I think since he did apologize, I think it's over and done with. I think we should just move on along with it. He did seem sincere on the um, in the video he posted on Twitter. Um, him saying, you know, he has two daughters. Don't even people. Him saying, you know, don't be like me. Be better than me. Um, I think he was when he said that in in, in the uh, he at that moment. I think he was trying to make a joke. But I think he now he knows that it wasn't really a good joke to say he's losing sponsors now with that situ- that yeah. happening. He's losing a lot of endorsements. But you know, I think he really realized what he did was wrong. Although at the same that. time, we can both say that everybody makes mistakes. Everybody makes mistakes. Everybody, everybody makes nobody's mistakes. perfect in in this world. People make mistakes left and right. But it just depends on how you overcome it. And um, I think he probably will overcome this situation. I think it's over and done with. We should all just move along with that. Now moving along with the NFL, we're going into the NBA. And NBA GMs had to do a survey on if they had to start a team, who were the first player they would choose. And the player that got the most votes, surprisingly, was Carl Anthony Towns of the Minnesota Timberwolves. And, um, Tim, are you surprised that players like LeBron, KD, Steph, Kawhi, and those like top-notch players, they didn't um, get the most votes? I am surprised because if I was one of the GMs, I would have picked LeBron um, yeah, or definitely. one of those guys because mm-hmm. you have to – you have to pick someone that you know that you can build a team around mm-hmm. because Carl Anthony Towns is a good player and has right. a ton of potential and talent, but um, you can't um, build a team around him mm-hmm. at this point in time. You can maybe in five years, but not right now. You can down the road. Yeah, I, I agree with you there. Um, but with uh, Carl Anthony Towns, I think with the GMs, what they were trying to do was pick who uh, they feel – if they had to start a team now to build around yeah. in like the next couple of years. Yeah. And not like uh, they didn't do a story about who would they win a championship at that moment for this season. Because if they did, if, I think if that was a real question, they would pick LeBron, Steph, uh, KD, Kawhi, Chris Paul, James Harden, all those like big all-star players. And I'm not saying that he's not a uh, – Carney Towns not an all-star player, but at the same time um, – They're kind of um, doing this like – who would you build around later yeah, on? Later on, because him and like this players like him, 
uh, Andre Kumpo, Anthony Davis, Anthony Davis, those guys, like they're the upcoming like ri- up and rising players. Like once he will like be LeBron the face of the league. Yeah, once like LeBron and those guys uh, retire. So yeah, I think that's what they were pretty much was saying with that. Like who has the better future? And I think Carney Towns has that. Him being seven feet, him um, can shoot the three, can shoot the fifteen for the shot, can uh, play the post, do like he's pretty much all around player as far as on the center position. And I mean he's pretty much going to do well this season with. Them bringing in Jimmy Butler, um, Jeff T with a big signing. They signed him. Um, they brought Taj Gibson. Yeah, we'll um, see how that goes. Yeah, they have a lot of pieces go. there. Yeah, well, Andrew Wiggins playing well. So I think that's what they were pretty much saying. Um, yeah, I think that's. I think that's, as far as with the NBA, I think we got everything there so far this week. Yeah. So now we're gonna transition to the NHL. The NHL hockey season started on Wednesday night with four games and the rest of the teams getting underway on Thursday and Friday. Uh, Many reporters and people around the league are picking the Pittsburgh Penguins and the Edmonton Oilers to go to the Stanley Cup, led by Sidney Crosby for the Penguins and uh, possible kid of the future, 20-year-old Connor McDavid for the Oilers. Uh, But at the same time, we can't forget that the Washington Capitals and the Chicago um, Blackhawks. Uh, um, Alex Ovechkin will lead the Capitals over the hump and win the Stanley Cup one of these days, while the... Blackhawks are always in the hunt, winning three of the past seven titles. Yep. So, I mean, I just feel like if it, if I had to pick um, two teams, two teams yeah, it, actually, it might be those two, but anything can happen. So, I mean, who would you choose, Randy? I mean, I'm like, a, like I told you before in the past, I'm not a big NHL guy, but I'm a big Capitals fan. I'm a big, like, all the home teams, like the Redskins, Wizards, uh, Capitals, Nationals. Yeah. I'm a big fan of all those teams. So, yeah. whoever's in that Whoever t- uh, sports that is, I'm a root for him. So I ho- hopefully most of the most of the Washington teams, especially like the Nationals and the Capitals, always have the first round exit. First round exit every time when they're pretty much projected to win the championship, and they have the most talent of each like sport. They always never. But seem I think to play I think well. with uh, Alex Ovechkin um, getting near the like back half. Uh, the end of his career almost right, right. maybe like next three four or five years mm-hmm. feel he's gonna he's gonna kick it up a notch and he's right. gonna take them all the way but i mean who knows yeah who knows we'll, we'll see how that go i mean Ovechkin he had a good game last night he had three goals a hat trick so hopefully that's a good start for the season and then you know they can um play well throughout the whole year and hopefully throughout the playoffs as well because you know, usually, I think, like, we talked earlier as well, that um, they were up 3-1 last year in the playoffs. And they ended and they up lost, losing. Losing so, to the Penguins, so. I mean, we'll, we'll see how their team yeah. ends up because they've had a lot of guys leave and a lot of new guys right. with the draft and um, just guys from other teams. So, we'll see how it shapes out. Yeah, I mean, like I said, like, even with, um, like, I know they always pin, like, these two together with Oveskin and uh, Sidney Crosby. They always pin these two together, but it seems like Crosby always finds a way to – to uh, win that battle, they they the um he got more rings than him, more play playoff wins. Like he seemed like when it comes to every statistical thing, he's always he's better. No demand in the best. But one. we'll see how it goes. I mean, I'm I'm hoping that Ovechkin um gets on top of him in right. one of those categories one of these days. But yeah. maybe maybe not. Maybe we'll see. But yeah, I mean that's it for this show. Um, thank you guys very much for listening to Inside the Huddle. Please listen again and next week as we bring you another update on ODU sports and other sports of interest. Until next week, go Monarchs. Go Monarchs.